Coach Kerry Keating, Yannick Atunga, Jr. from Santa Clara University. Coach. Coach, this is going to be my favorite session because I don't know if you know this, yeah. but Coach just got a multi-year contract extension. He will deserve one, too. And guess what? He's buying lunch for the three of us. We do that anyway. We got yeah. that. Anyway, so, yeah. Contract or not, we always buy lunch where we're coming from. I mean, Coach, I did your game a couple of years ago. Uh, we're going through a rough season, injuries, all kinds of yeah. stuff. But here you are the following year, which is last season, 26 wins, the biggest yeah. turnaround college basketball history you win the CBI what, what was that like for, for you how proud were you of this staff and your players really proud of the players I mean because the biggest aspect of that was that all of them returned from the year before we had no seniors on that roster the year before and we had some turmoil as you mentioned with an injury and suspension and they all came back I think it's a huge test and especially in this environment that we coach in now where you have a lot of kids coming and going and maybe looking for greener pastures and I'm really proud of our kids stuck it out and had to chance to enjoy the fruits of their labor and their, their chemistry developing and come back and, and earn a championship like they did last year. Kerry, that was the great news, the, the turnaround, the wins, the bad news. You've lost close to 6,000 oh, yeah. points on your oh, yeah, roster. I about that part. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, well, you can tell Chris has never coached like us. Yeah, I just happened to yeah. lose almost 5,900 <laughs> points. What's going to be the identity of this new team? We're still carving it out a little bit. You know, we, we have... Uh, guys that have played in spot minutes before. I mean, obviously having this guy is huge. He led the league in rebounding in conference games last year. And as you know, Dave, scoring points is a premium, but almost right behind that is rebounding on both ends of the floor. When you can bring back the Leeds leading rebounder, obviously the leading rebounder on our team with Mark Trasini last year, it's a nice cornerstone to try to get that identity, to identity carved with. I like our freshmen. The talent is undeniable, but they're freshmen. You can't make freshmen fifth-year seniors. You know, we have some guys that have redshirted, and two of those guys that left last year, Kevin and Mark, were both fifth-year seniors. Uh, but I, I like the fact that they know where we're coming from. We've chosen our team where it is built. They want to build on what we've what we've had established in the past. But they really want to get moving forward, and I think they're eager to kind of get that identity form themselves. Kerry, you only have three seniors on this team. How important was the early start of practice? to help yeah. molding this young group. It was big for the freshmen. They all were there in summer school. They've all been there since June. So it's almost like they're ready now to kind of see someone else at this point in the season. And not just because practice started early, but because they've been together. And as you know, the world changes. We're allowed to be with them for a time uh, on the court in the summertime. But it was big for these guys to get on the court with them, the guys that have been there before, the juniors, those five juniors and the two seniors we had, bringing the six newcomers in, you know, getting these freshmen acclimated to, to the, uh, the academic rigors, but also what's going to happen physically, and getting more time with them kind of get them accustomed a little bit quicker. Uh, it was really important for us to take advantage of that, and I'm, I think so far we have. All right, we're going to get to you next. All right, Yannick, tell us about this young man right here. I'm really proud of him. I mean, a, a guy that made an ultimate sacrifice, as we mentioned, this day and age where kids are coming and going, uh, I remember when Yannick was a freshman not too long ago kind of debating whether he was going to play, whether he was going to redshirt. And Yannick and I have a lot of common uh, bonds through, through the country of Cameroon and the two Cameroonians I was fortunate enough to coach when I was at UCLA. And really Luke, who uh, Yannick competed with and with Alfred Aboya this summer uh, for their country when he traveled to China on the national team, uh, kind of gave him an idea that, that I would he could trust me. you know. And, and I think that, that what's happening now, Yannick being a – uh, a fourth year junior he really has kind of evolved into a leadership role and I think his experience as I'll tell you this summer playing against grown men and seeing where he's at relative to that in his own development is going to pay dividends for him when he come back to WCC. Yannick tell us about that experience playing for your country in China and his coach said against grown men. Yes it was definitely a great experience for me because it was my first time and I was excited you know as when we, you're from Africa or any other country it's a great honor to be called to play for the national team, so I had uh, the opportunity to do that this summer and to compete against grown men, professional athletes that, you know, they do it, they, they did it before me, they have more experience, they know what they're talking about and stuff. It was really good, you know, to be able to work as hard and go against them every day. You know, my, my, my goal wasn't to absolutely, like, try to, like, take over somebody's spot. It was to learn from them, to be able to, like, come back here and use it to be able to have a good college career. Gave me goosebumps right there, Coach. No doubt. Well, it tells me how smart you are. Comment allez-vous? Très bien, merci. Oui, je vais bien, je vais très bien. Et vous? They can't follow me. I was about to get off. You can do the whole thing. I had to learn some French when I recruited Tony Parker. And after hearing Coach explain your background, I knew you could speak French. Let's go back to English so Chris can stay with the interview. Thank you, Coach. Why did you pick Santa Clara? 
Um, you know, it's one of those 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 things that you know that I can't lie. Coming from a, a really far country in Africa, you know, and having my whole family living there, it was very important for me to be uh, at a place where you know people that I'm going to be surrounded with really care about me as a person, as an athlete, a second. So Coach Kidding, when uh, he was recruiting me, he didn't come up come up to me as a yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be a coach for you. I want you to play for me. Like he's coming to me as like as a parent, as a caregiver who's gonna take care of me, knowing that the next four year or five year I was gonna be with him. And it's very important for me to have the, that feeling of being surrounded with people that actually care about me as a person and then as an athlete. Second, so when I came to Santa Clara over the summer of my uh, junior year for basketball camp, I had a really good time. And then I came back for my official visit, and I had that feeling when I landed at the airport that I was coming home. So I knew it was, it was, it was over after that. So, you know, Coach, uh, it, so much is placed on wins and losses. But when you hear a story like that, I, I mean, that's really what college athletics is about, and, and, and probably what yeah. makes makes you do this job. When I first got <coughs> to Santa Clara, my staff and I had no children. Six years later, we have nine. <laughs> you know, and one of the things that we parlayed on that is to involve our players in our in our personal lives. They all know that our kids, our kids all know them. They spend an inordinate amount of right. times with each other in the gym. Certainly, when they have a chance to come over to the house, I mean, it's really it's a it's a cliche thing to say you're trying to build a family, but I really do believe in that. I've been fortunate to have been with coaches who have have fostered that environment. We're trying to take it to another level. And I think part of the reward of us being able to stick around through that contract you mentioned outside of the free lunches uh, <laughs> is the fact that we keep getting a chance to develop our family. And it's nice to see all the kids come through and graduate. It's even nicer to see them now coming back shortly thereafter and still want to kind of be a part of it. You know, like, you know, it's pretty special when kids that are out starting to become men and working, maybe playing. They can't wait to come back and see how the guys are doing and the guys are left behind and see that their legacy is intact. Well, Yannick, you hit on the most important thing I've always felt in recruiting. It's about the family. It's about having that feeling because coach has to be your parent, and especially for you, a long way from yes, your family. But let's get down to the nitty-gritty of basketball. Yes, what has coach taught you to become a better <clears throat> player? Mental toughness, you know, mental toughness and accountability. Take care of everything on and off the court, you know. And, and especially the, the class work, you know, coach is all about graduating, making sure that everybody goes to class every day, you're on time and everything. So that, take care of the off the court side so you can come in the court really to compete every day. So that's like the, the, the main thing that I got so far from coach, knowing that you have to be able to take care of everything else outside of basketball to be able to be successful on the court. You know, players do what coaches demand. Whatever the coach wants to have done, uh, on his offensive end, defensive end. What does Coach Keating emphasize defensively, sort of his thumbprint on his great teams? Communication, talk all the time, you know, and your attitude and effort it tells everything about your team, you know, it's all about, the, and the next play, you know, talk a lot, talk. If you don't know what you're doing, you know, say what you're doing. So it's all the time, it's all about communicating, talk, talking to your team and tell him he, you got his back, he knows that, you know, your team, you know, take, 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 be ready to take a charge, everything you, you need to do to make your team feel that you're in the game and you guys support each other. We might need to bring him to Laker practice today and have him talk to the squad a little bit. I mean, we that, talk about that, that, that that's all what I'm talking time. about right there. Communicate, <clears throat> have each other's back. I got to give our baseball coach a little bit of credit because I don't have such an eloquent way of stating those things behind yeah. closed doors. <laughs> Uh, but we're all trying to develop this common theme, and, and he, his development now of our toughness level is equating to emotional maturity. Yeah. And that's really what we've kind of done, is we've taken a way more emotional approach in this and developed those relationships so we can develop a bigger bond and a stronger bond on the court. And I think it's helped us win these two championships. Hopefully we can keep developing that. Coach, I wanted to ask you this. Jay Billis came and spoke yeah. to the kids, wrote that book, Toughness. Mm -hmm. um, that's a really, he's well, a, such a great college basketball a advocate. Yeah. What did that mean for you well, guys? He, Jay and I go back 25 years when we were working camp at Duke together, and he was a graduate assistant. I was just trying to get into the ranks, and I was fortunate enough to work with him. And we just kind of stayed in touch. Obviously, through basketball, a lot of relationships stay that way, whether you're far or near. And he happened to be in town at the time. The team was already had the book in hand, and we were kind of building off our summer reading from last year. 
uh, and to develop that toughness. And again, the, the, the way that I put it and how, how Yannick describes it, of taking care of yourself on and off the court, of, of utilizing the support that you have, of understanding what the priorities right. are to put yourself in a position to succeed inside the lines, which has resulted in these two championships and a chance to keep developing now with more time. It, it's really about having that emotional maturity. But really for me, as I talked to the baseball team about last week, ironically, you can't have the emotional maturity unless you're emotionally invested in each other. The one thing I did take away from Jay that he said about us that he wished he had had when he was in school at Duke was we know each other a lot more than he ever knew his teammates That's because we really cause our, and it causes our guys the way we go about it to really open themselves up to develop that trust. And what we're trying to do on a toughness level is kind of implement those 33 points that Jay based the book on in the article way back, but really get them to kind of focus on each other and what makes them go so that when the times get tough and the Ref, refs going against you or you're on the road or maybe the ball's not falling, we can get to those quick huddles and we can kind of wrap each other around each other's finger real quick and kind of get ourselves focused on that next well, You know, Kerry, I love your philosophy because I've always thought in my 18 <coughs> years of college coaching that you can never count on a kid that can't make it to class, the little things, yeah. and you can't count on them at the end of the game to whether it's set a screen or take a shot. So I love that. Last thing I want to ask you, Chris mentioned toughness. Who's the toughest defender on this squad right now? Well, I won't say Yannick because he's here. I'd say Yannick because he's proven that. I mean, I, I think in his first uh, year here, he had a propensity for being in a position to take a charge. I think he's done a great, uh, a great job in adjusting to where the rules are. He can obviously block shots, but he can defensively rebound really well. And I think one of the more underrated things about defense is we're all worried about what happens before the shot is taken, but that's largely based on your effort and your communication. To finish the possession, you have to go get the ball. And I think Yannick has proven time and time again how hard it is to keep him off the glass, but he can really be a boon to our offense getting started by finishing defensive possessions with defensive rebounds. And I'd say right now he's kind of put himself in that position, being a fourth-year player, understanding what's important, the communication aspect, but maybe the most important aspect is finishing possessions with a defensive rebound. I give the nod to Yannick today. Coach, Yannick, you make a lot of people proud because you guys do it the right way. That was Thank a lot you. of fun. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thanks, you know, guys. Coach, and I'll be Thank watching you. WCC Thanks. this Thanks, week, Dave. every Thanks. week, watching you guys, and uh, we'll have a lot of fun with it. Au revoir. Au revoir. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good job, guys.